I hope you were with us last week for the first installment of Liberia Calls because we have heard already some amazing things that God is doing in a country that uh, a lot of you have never heard of. And I'm back with Don Riley and uh, mm. the country director in Liberia for Hope for Home. Yes. Uh, tell us some amazing things last week, but it doesn't stop. God just doesn't stop when you're, when you're just walking in faith. Mm. At the same time, just finding out what, what he's doing and then can step into that. Uh, we were talking about Denta, which is a, which was a, I don't want to say God forsaken because it's not because He sent you. Mm -hmm. It was a, a a town that was dedicated to Satan, mm -hmm. and you're, we were in the middle of that conversation last week. Uh, take us back to Denta a little bit, uh, a town that really was dedicated to Satan. Uh, just to review, mm -hmm. um, just a little bit, yeah, yeah, we. Uh, um, went into the town. It was uh, God provided in a miraculous way for us to go into the town. Um, but it has been an incredible yeah. spiritual battle um, while being in the town. Uh, we realized very early on um, uh, the vision there is uh, to change the town um, through education, mm -hmm. Christian education, and discipling children and raising up um, from the yeah. school the future leaders um, in God's church. And uh, um, we learned very early on that you cannot educate a, uh, a sick child. Mm -hmm. um, so we, uh, there's a clinic um, there in Denton Town, and you also cannot educate um, a hungry child. I don't know if you've ever tried to sit <laughs> a child down who's, Let them pay attention, uh, yes. who's hungry, but you cannot, it's yeah. impossible. Mm -hmm. And so in order to disciple our uh, children, um, we had to open the feeding program and uh, we had to open a medical clinic and we opened uh, a school as well. Um, Dentatown has been uh, an a incredible spiritual battle. Um, it is um, kind of like the, what you read about in the book of Acts that you think surely none of this stuff exists yeah. today. Um, as we, we have taken a stand um, for for Christ in the town, and while taking the stand for Christ, um, the the devil is not welcoming of that yeah, he's at not all. Gonna, he's not going to go away. And and people who have dedicated their lives to and gone up into higher rankings of the secret society, which is a very demonic thing, mm -hmm. ha, have stood against us. And um, and so uh, a couple um, couple things: uh, the children in the town. Um, the tradition is to still initiate them into the secret mm -hmm. society. And, and to make it very clear, um, the secret society, what is that? That's a very demonic thing. It's a, um, where, where uh, they literally have a, a person that they're calling the devil, and, um, and he, will, he will come into the town and he terrorizes the town with fear. Um, in the past, uh, before we came in, they were doing human sacrificing. I mean, it is yeah, it is hard. absolutely um, terrible, and so um, so now we have this challenge where we have um, uh, a, a Christian school um, coming into uh, a society that is absolutely in the dark, mm -hmm. and you see this confrontation between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. And by the way. Um, if you have a, a very dark room and you turn on the light switch, what has to happen to the darkness? It has to go away. And um, so the kingdom of light always wins. The, the, the light mm -hmm. will always remove the darkness, but sometimes it comes at a great cost. Um, yeah. And so we've had um, bringing the gospel into Dented Town through education, um, we've had incredible spiritual battles. And... Um, there, there are times where uh, multiple town meetings would be called. And, you know, you read in the book of Acts about mm -hmm. Paul standing before mm -hmm. the entire town. I can't tell you how many times I've stood in front of the whole time, town. And as, as you speak, um, literally people would cover their ears and, and would say, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to listen to, to what you're saying. Um, the, the town... Uh, after two years of, of ministry there, they wanted to dedicate their children to Satan. Uh, and, uh, and, and we said, no way, not under, not under our watch. And, and they, um, the town said, we can continue on dedicating them to Satan because the mission loves our children and they will accept them back. And they'll still feed them, they'll still give them medical care, but they'll 
and, but we can still dedicate them to Satan. We can we'll still send them there for the, for well, the eat physical from, things. Eat from the devil's table and from the Lord's table at the same time. Let's get the both the best out of out, out of both worlds. And so at that time we were it was incredible <clears throat> spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. um, we would we would meet in the town chief. Um, and the town owner would literally be sitting in the chair and they're shaking um, because they, the devil, the witch doctor is present in the meeting. And, uh, and we, would, we would say, uh, do not dedicate your children to the, to the devil. And then the witch doctor, when we would leave the town, would say, uh, we have spiritual ears in every house. We are listening to what you're saying. Uh, and um, so Denta Town- fear into their hearts again. It's a place of incredible spiritual battle um, but of course, God has given us authority over, mm -hmm. over all of this stuff. We, we can go in there and take authority. Um, Satan is, is a defeated foe. And, um, you know, I've, 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 I've been in very dangerous situations in Liberia, um, but never once have I felt fear, um, not because I can fight. I've never been in a fight <laughs> my entire life. But because God is so much greater than the forces that stand against you. Well, you've been in a spiritual fight for a long time, but you've, <laughs> you've got the power to do that. It's, but uh, you don't have to worry about the physical fight. Right. And wow. So um, just to wrap up Denta Town, um, somehow we have to move these children from uh, the way of thinking uh, um, under witchcraft and mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, children, uh, there's no marriage. There's, um, the family unit is completely destroyed. Um, and so uh, a mother will have uh, children by many different fathers. It's a completely dark place. Um, but the way we, um, we are discipling children and we found that it is truly working is something that we're calling the, the wordless Bible. Mm -hmm. And um, the wordless Bible is... Uh, we have an artist that has drawn a picture for every, um, every verse in the Bible. That is, an, that is amazing. Yeah, we're going to see these on the screen as well, but that is well, he, amazing. I shouldn't say he has drawn. He is drawing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd take a while. <laughs> but um, the, um, the Word of God never returns void. Mm -hmm. It is powerful. It is described as a seed. And a seed um, is not meant to stay a seed. It's meant to grow. Oh. And um, what we're finding is that as, um, as our children are memorizing from the wordless Bible, um, uh, just to be very clear, the wordless Bible, our teachers will, will show the picture mm -hmm. and, which represents a verse. And they will begin in like Mark chapter 1, in the beginning, uh, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then they move the picture. Um, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send a messenger before your face who will prepare your way. And they can work their way through the Bible. The Word of God is not returning void, and our children are being transformed. Mm -hmm. They go from our school, which is in the kingdom of light, back into their homes, but the gospel is taking root in their lives. And right now you're up to the sixth grade? We're up to the sixth grade. Yeah. Um, we, we all... We offer school as early as, as we can get our hands on the kids so mm -hmm. that we can start to train them. Um, and every year we offer another grade, grade level in the school. By the time, uh, I, I mentioned this last week, um, but by the time uh, children graduate from um, our school, they will have the majority of the New Testament memorized. And, and we believe God. that if we do our job effectively, there's no reason why they can't go out and serve. And they're, they're prepared mm -hmm. to be church leaders, missionaries, right. and, and, and serve Jesus. So you are training up pastors in, in, a, in a very, very unusual way by starting with kindergarten. That's right, <laughs> kindergarten. <laughs> That'll work. So, so you talked about the, uh, treating, the, giving uh, the medical care. Uh, you, can't, you can't really teach a sick child. That actually started on your front porch, didn't it? It started on my front porch. <laughs> So you got to start small and work up apparently in, in, in Liberia. We, we went to Liberia. We never intended um, to have a school. Yeah. We never intended to, to start a medical ministry. Um, we never intended to minister to special needs children. Um, but God that had is, a plan that you, he just unfolded before you slowly, didn't he? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good way because if he showed it to you all at one time, it may be too daunting to take on. It, it would be. Yeah. <laughs> um, let, let's talk about the medical ministry. Sure. Um, 
the medical ministry started on my front porch and um, the sick just started showing up mm -hmm. on my front porch. At, at first, they, um, we had no way to meet their needs um, except to send them into the local uh, clinics and local hospitals. And the local hospitals are in complete shambles. Um, uh, I mean, you show up uh, for a surgery and they, they, they ask you for, um, to go and buy needles. They ask you to go buy uh, the basic things that you you would need. So take your own supplies. Take, to bring <laughs> literally to bring your own supplies, and so we started sending um, uh, them to the local clinics, and the local clinics um, uh, were very expensive. And um, but we hired uh, missionary physician assistants um, at our special needs village that we talked mm -hmm. about last week. Um, what happened is a friend of mine. Uh, has a ministry where he was training up um, missionary physician assistants. And um, when his class graduated, I said, "We give us the best in your class, that's what we want. And anyways, our, I quickly learned it was a lot uh, less expensive to treat the sick ourselves under our, um, our uh, uh, missionary physician assistants license than it was to, um, to send them to the local clinic. And so what, what we did at first, um, um, oh, by the way, why in the world do we help people? I mean, I, I thought you're, a missionary presents the gospel, mm -hmm. doesn't he? Uh, what's the motivation behind it? And the, the reason why we help people is because we love people. Um, mm -hmm. The reason why um, we rescue special needs children is because we love them. Um, Love is the driving force behind everything uh, that we are doing. Um, and so uh, at first we were, we were um, treating them, sending them to the local clinic. Mm -hmm. um, I, and then we were, we were um, ministering to the needs of the sick um, uh, just by sending them to our group home. Um, and then we, we had an idea of, of taking this medicine um, and going into the bush uh, where there is literally no medicine, no modern medicine, and using medicine as, as a way to express God's love mm -hmm. but sharing the love of Jesus at the mm -hmm. same time. And so we would pack medicine in these totes and we would get in cars and we would uh, drive deep into the bush to a place that has no access to modern medicine and we would um, treat the sick. And wouldn't you know, um, literally the entire village would, would show up and um, because the, the medical needs in the bush are so, so huge, they would show up and, um, and we would have hundreds of people uh, that would be tested and would be positive for malaria or positive for... Overwhelming? In overwhelming. Um, oh. And so the, um, our medical ministry started um, by uh, treating the sick mm -hmm. um, under our, our PA's license and doing these mobile clinics. Um, and then as people would make their way through the clinic, um, we would start by presenting the gospel and, and literally entire villages would be present. So sharing the gospel. And then a, as a patient would make their way through our clinic, they each stop that they made was a stop in which they were prayed for. So they would register uh -huh. and they're prayed for. They were seen by the physician assistant they were prayed for. They go to the mobile lab they were prayed for. And the very last, um, last thing is they would meet with the pastor and they would have the gospel presented to them one-on-one -on -one and have an opportunity to choose to oh. receive or reject Jesus Christ. Um, and so we, we did that for a number of years on Kokoya Road is the, mm -hmm. the road that we minister on. And we, that has proven to be a very fruitful um, uh, a way of, of sharing the gospel. Um, if you start on, at our town in Bonga and go clear to the end of Kokoya Road, you'll pass many, many towns, but it, you would be very hard to find someone who has not been treated in our clinic um, in any of those towns, and it would be very difficult for you to find someone who has not heard right. the gospel. So it, it's been a very fruitful ministry. Mm -hmm. Well, that goes on then. Uh, I, I watched on one of your YouTube videos, you took us on a tour through a hospital okay. that's being built. Yes. Uh, you talk about, I mean, you're going into the, to the bush and carrying supplies in the cars, but 
Now there's a hospital being built. Yes. Um, what we, do you, you just don't stop, do you? Because uh, God doesn't stop. No, God doesn't stop. <laughs> there's the, the slave keep, is keep not... You saying, okay. <laughs> the, God doesn't stop. And, right. and he cares for yeah, widows yeah. and orphans yeah. and the sick yeah. and the poor. He cares for the lowly. Um, it's a miracle. It's just a, a absolute <laughs> miracle. Um, uh, we began to pray. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the largest medical need in Liberia is children. Um, uh, the children are the last to receive treatment. It's different than here. We would, our children mm -hmm. would be first. Um, but they are the last to receive treatment. And so we began to pray that God would enable us to open the children's clinic. Um, I didn't put any post out, no internet, no blog post, no videos, nothing. Um, and I was contacted by an organization called Live 2540. Um, and I just encourage your viewers to uh, go and check out Live 2540. Um, but they asked us, Can, we would like to build a clinic. Um, they asked to do it. Yeah, we didn't approach them. They asked us and said, um, would that be something you'd be interested in? And we're just like, oh my goodness, this is an absolute miracle mm -hmm. of, of God. Um, and so they said, we would like to raise the money um, for the clinic. And this clinic is going to be yours, but um, we just view ourselves as a supporting mm -hmm. um, branch of a ministry. That's our job. Um, and so um, they did a fundraiser. Um, Around that time, a, a doctor by the name of Dr. Mikey um, came to visit our special needs village. And Dr. Mikey uh, ha has connections with the Mercy Ship. So we wanted to see if any of our kids yeah. um, from the special needs village could benefit from the Mercy Ship. Um, but while he was present, um, he was moved literally to tears a few times um, as he saw the kids oh, and how yeah. they were being cared for. and. Imagine. And um, he's a pediatrician, he and his wife. And um, so, so we have a, a, a clinic that's going to be built, but we need doctors, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, through a series of events, um, he and his wife, uh, Dr. Bethany and Dr. Mikey, are joining the mission, oh. um, partnering with us. Wow. They also have a, a very strong ministry in, in, at Elwa, um, which is in Monrovia. But then that it, is really God's provision. It <laughs> is just amazing. It's a complete miracle. Yeah. Um, uh, I, we had a, a man coming on a short term trip. This is stuff only God can do. Mm -hmm. um, he he um, Daryl Bile is his name and he's coming. He was on one of your videos. Yes. I, I saw him arrive at the airport without his luggage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, anyways, uh, he came and I met him for the first time at the airport. And um, I said, what, what do you do for a living? I'm just trying to get mm -hmm. to know him a little bit. And he said, um, I'm a building engineer. And I said, oh. what's mm. a building engineer do? <laughs> um, and anyways, uh, he told me what he, he did. And um, I asked him, I told him, well, we're building this clinic mm -hmm. and I'm not an engineer, but I have kind of rough drawings. Mm -hmm. um, would you mind taking a look at it? And uh, long story short, he has committed long term to the mission field. Um, he is currently on the ground um, in, in Africa uh, building the Jesus Loves Me Children's Clinic. Oh, wow. The Children's Clinic, um, it's called clinic um, because of uh, legal reasons, mm -hmm. um, but possibly we'll have to change its name to Jesus Loves Me Children's Hospital. There's, so they can, have, they can do surgery and overnight stays and... We have um, outpatient care. Mm -hmm. um, we have a surgical ward. Uh, we have a maternal ward. Um, infant mortality rate and, and also the, the maternal uh, mortality rate is extremely high in Africa. Uh, we have inpatient feeding um, for malnourished children. Mm -hmm. um, and in the clinic, um, we also have the general inpatient ward as well as isolation ward and other things. Mm -hmm. But it's essentially a children's hospital. And so God has completely met, yeah. an, he sees the needs of the people. His heart is truly for the oppressed. Yeah. It's truly for the lowly and he is meeting their needs. Yeah. Where, where's the hospital physically located in, re, in relationship to Bonga and, and Denta? Um, 
it, it's it's really cool. Um, of course it is. <laughs> his safe <laughs> haven, good. his safe haven village is mm -hmm. located up the hill, which of course the the medical needs are going to be huge among the special needs yeah, children. Certainly. And down the at the bottom of the hill is um, the Jesus Loves Me Children's uh, Clinic, and um, we chose the name on purpose because. Um, in our area, there are a lot of Muslims. There are a lot of um, people uh, that are involved in the secret society. And, and from the very beginning, uh, we want even like, where are you, where are you going to, to get treatment? And they have to say, Jesus loves, loves me. me. <laughs> Um, that is, that is, that where, is. where did you find your healing? I found it at Jesus loves me. Um, and so the, the name is there on purpose. I can see why. <laughs> Good choice. So um, the vision for the place is mm -hmm. um, to use uh, the gospel to express love of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We minister to the sick, not because of we're trying to con them into anything, but because of genuine love. But also we minister to the sick um, in presenting the gospel to them because we love them. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Uh, the heart of our medical ministry will stay the same. Every patient will hear the gospel when they visit our clinic, mm -hmm. um, be given the opportunity to choose to receive or, or to re reject yeah. Jesus Christ. Now, you'd mentioned that uh, uh, the Satanists and Muslims and other people come. As they come into the clinic, have you, have you seen results in their lives? Are they still rejecting Jesus? I just want it, what he can give me to, to make me well. Um, Everyone is coming to the clinic. Oh, by the way, we're um, right now we're operating a two-room clinic, mm -hmm. um, and uh, because the hospital is still, yeah, being built. still being built, and we treat um, a thousand, um, approximately a thousand five hundred patients um, every month. Uh, we provide wow. free medicine uh, for them, and everything from start to finish is is free, um, and so. They're coming uh, because there's no other place to go to, mm -hmm. to receive quality health care. And uh, that provides a good ab um, avenue to share mm -hmm. the gospel and to present yeah. to them. You're still getting a lot, a lot of opposition from the Satanists uh, on a regular basis? It does not. God gives us the armor of God for a mm -hmm. reason. He, he tells us we're going to live... And, and the life as, uh, as a Christian is described in, in Scripture as the life of a soldier. Mm -hmm. You're to wake up in the morning, you're to put on the full armor oh, of God. Yeah. And, um, and we, we live that battle every day sure. over there. And I, I've discovered that, that this, the, the, the strongest spiritual battle that you'll ever fight is a battle for your own heart. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, um, when Satan attacks, he attacks in a very personal way. Um, he'll attack um, your character or the town will rise up and they have wrong assumptions of you. And, uh, and so the, it, the, the reason I say the, the hardest battle fight is a battle for your own heart because um, you have to choose to forgive and you have to choose not to be bitter. And, when you when you have unforgiveness or or bitterness, you become useless in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but it wow. is daily a, a spiritual battle. Something I notice about the armor of God is it's always on the front of us. I mean, it's not on our back, so it's always it's a challenge to go forward into the fight. We go forward in the fight, but we go forward as a team. Mm -hmm. Like um, this is not. Uh, Don Riley work. Yeah. I, I, this is a it would be impossible to do uh, it we, one person. We have other missionaries that are mm -hmm. uh, fully engaged. We have um, other mission partners that are with us, and so you move forward. You're not protecting the backside, but we have uh, great team members and supporters that mm -hmm. back us. Right. That's the other thing I want to talk about just for just for a couple minutes. You said something that kind of broke my heart, where you said you can you can take in as many of the special needs children as you have dollars to support them. Yes. And there's more than more out there right now than what you have in the village. Okay. Uh, our audience needs to get involved. Um, 
So we've got the wealth of America around we, us. We will not turn away a child that mm -hmm. is in danger of being killed. Kill. Uh, we always have enough room to take in more One children. More. Um, our homes currently are, are overpacked. We have, we're, they're supposed to have three to, to four children in them, and our homes have five or six. Uh -huh. Um, and so we need new homes, and a home costs about $25,000 to build. Um, and when we bring in the children, um, uh, we need sponsors for those children. And um, for special needs children, uh, therapy and their medicine and everything it takes to sustain their life, uh, it costs about $300 a month. Mm -hmm. And so um, a great blessing that people could provide for our ministry would be to sponsor uh, special needs mm -hmm. children. Um, and then our ministry in Dentatown, it is completely sponsored, um, sponsor uh, led and, and sponsored. Um, uh, it, it's dependent upon our sponsorship program and it costs $40 a month uh, to sponsor a child mm -hmm. in Dentatown. And then one of our mission's greatest needs, and I don't know how he does it, but somehow everything stays afloat every month. But um, one of our greatest needs is the need of uh, money to literally for medicine. If, uh -huh. if we can just have more medicine, we don't turn away uh, the sick and uh, somehow we're able to treat them every month, but it, it's, it's a lot of people, you know, you, uh, we have to have more money for medicine. Yeah. Wow. Well, it, it, at least when you look at this, this neighborhood here, in Northwestern Ohio, uh, if, if someone really wants to get involved in missions and you can't go, and you've heard it on a lot of international ministries before that uh, sponsor a child or, or, or send your dollars to this ministry, uh, this, is, this is coming out of, out of Ohio and Indiana, this ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, Don, thank you so much. Uh, if people want to get involved, how do they contact you? Um, you can contact um, me um, online uh, you can visit the blog, libriacalls.blogspot.com. Uh, you can also email me, um, don at hopeforhome.org. And I would love to come and speak at your church. So invite me over and um, we'll do lunch and I will talk to whoever we need to talk to to share the story, um, to get the, the news out uh, for the sake of the Liberian children. That is amazing, and I know that a lot of people have seen now, they finally know where Liberia is mm -hmm. and what the needs are. It's something that nobody gives a thought to until they hear the story of, of what God's doing and the miracles that have taken place. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, it's been, it's been a blessing. Me. It's been a challenge. It's been a real challenge to hear the stories, but it's also a blessing to hear what God's doing through you. I appreciate it. Thank you. What an incredible account. It's too easy for us in the United States to not realize what's happening to God's people in other countries. That's right, those special needs children, those school children, those villagers in need of medical care, every single one created and loved by God. As Don Riley recently mentioned, he is interested in sharing this information in local churches, coffee get togethers, small groups. Email him at don at hopeforhome.org. Well, this is part two of two. If you missed part one or would like to watch the entire series again, just visit our YouTube page. I'm Jennifer Beck. Thanks for watching. Liberia Calls right here on TV44.